Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. As you can tell by the look of me, I'm sanding drywall. So I just want to talk to you guys a little bit, give you a couple of my drywall sanding tips. Um, some of the things that you want to do is you want to protect your lungs, right? So a lot of people will buy these paper filters and these paper filters, this one's actually a paper respirator filter, which is like a step up, but um, it doesn't seal to your face very well. And what happens is you kind of breathe around the filter. So uh, you'll see a lot of people wear these things. It's basically so you don't spit on people, uh, but it doesn't really, you don't really breathe through them. Uh, the air is like water. Um, it takes the path of least resistance and the least, the path of least resistance is around the outsides, so around the seal, because it doesn't actually seal against your face. So you get one of these NIOSH rated proper respirator masks. Um, this one is a double one. It has like a, a chemical filter and it has a particulate filter on the outside and you can change the whole thing or you can change the outside particulate filters and to get extra life out of mine when I drywall I just vacuum this part out actually <laughs> so and uh, yeah these seal against your face really well there's like a top strap and a bottom strap to go around your face and you make that nice and tight and it seals up against the bridge of your nose really well it seals around the sides of your your face really well and around your chin and uh, if you're scruffy um, there's no help for you right you gotta shave to get these on properly alright so some of the tools you can get this one is the Richard Vacpol and you can use this um, to vacuum your drywall uh, dust up as you're doing it as you're sanding um, it does work if you absolutely need to be super clean you can buy one of these I think they're around 50 or 60 dollars and they do function uh, but I really wouldn't recommend them um, make the mess clean it up after uh, try to um, maybe control your environment close the doors maybe put a drop sheet up or something great but uh, you know if you absolutely need to you can get these but uh, I don't really recommend them I find that they get in the way and they're tedious and it takes longer so some of the things that I use here's a couple of these sanders these are hand sanders and this one is a cobalt one it has a metal back and then this one I think is a Richard and you can get these by the paint department and by drywall sometimes they're in both departments and the sandpaper you'll probably find in the paint department as well so these just have these wing nuts and you put your sandpaper on it and you tighten up the wing nut and it holds it in place and these are great these are your bread and butter for sanding um, now the reason that I like the Richard one better than the cobalt is just because of the thickness there's a foam pad on here and this foam pad is thicker so it's easier to feather out the edges of your drywall patch that you're doing um, where the mud is right so you want to feather out the edge first and then work on the whole thing and uh, that's my favorite way of doing it it seems to work really well so the thicker the pad actually it works better than the other one they're both good tools just that this one has a little thicker pad so this is my number one out of these two tools that I have right um, the other thing is sandpaper so you can get these this is a Norton product again in the uh, paint section and these are sanding screens sanding screens are much better than sandpaper they look like this you can see through them basically it's like a grid and the grid is covered in uh, sanding particles and uh, anyway that works really well and after you put them on after you put them on here right you can actually take this flip it around on the other side and it has uh, you know fresh sandpaper on the other side <laughs> so it's reversible which is great um, you have to cut them to size you can leave them wide like I did here you see how that sticks out um, not all of them are the right size so I trim them down generally this one because I'm not using this up against any corners I left it hanging out over the edge because it doesn't matter 
but this one I use to get into the corners and when you're up against the corner like that then you have to make sure that that's flush all right it works much better uh, the other thing is you've got these same thing that goes on a pole right you put it on an extension pole and then you can put it up to your ceiling and you can sand and guess what that's really hard on your shoulders um, it's very difficult to control you can do it now if you're a pro uh, drywaller you'll see pro drywallers sometimes use stuff like this because they do such a good job when they're applying the mud they barely need to sand so basically they're just you know kind of wiping this over and uh, you know they're good but for the rest of us who aren't pro drywallers who use too much mud and we're sloppy and messy um, you, we've got to sand the crap out of it so it's actually easier to um, go up on like a scaffold right here this is the metal tech baker scaffold i have another video on this if you're interested um, i really like these i have two of them now i bought another one off of kijiji and uh, they're really great you can put them on staircases and stuff and and they're very adjustable and you know anyway and they're smaller so they'll fit in a staircase they're not the standard size they're a little bit different so you can have one side higher and one side lower and then have your platform straight in between so it's super useful um, other than that you know you've got your step stools you've got the little um, I don't have one but it's like basically a little step stool ladder style thing it's they're neat they're about 60 or 100 bucks like a little platform they're great or you just have your old-fashioned you know step ladder which functions well but you know you have to get up and down on the ladder and stuff right so it takes time so also the sandpaper I'll go back to the sandpaper for a second um, this is 120 grit generally I would buy you, you can get it in where is it on the back here 80 100 120 150 180 and 220 I only really buy like the 100 or the 120 and the reason I do that I you don't need to go over it and over it and over it um, after you sand it you put a lot of pressure on the first time and then um, you use lighter pressure and then there's and you like circle and stuff and you don't have a lot of marking so you don't have to go to a lighter and a lighter and a lighter you just put less pressure on it and uh, it'll erase the marks so no need to buy multiples of these just get 100 120 you're fine and then your finished coat they have these are amazing these are sanding sponges again this is sorry it's dirty this is a Norton product again in the paint department so you have the sanding sponge and it has sandpaper on every side and then it's a sponge so it's squishable and you can contour it so you can get into like rounded corners things like that and there's other types of sanding sponges there I just have these big block ones because that's what I need right now um, but you can get different sometimes they have different shapes and stuff uh, these are great so this is my finished sponge and I finish the corners I finish all my walls with these sponges it's incredible you're gonna love these if you've never used one before you're gonna love them um, what else is there I think that's basically it so now I'm just gonna show you kind of my technique so what we're gonna do is around the edges that's really where it's roughest so what I try to do is I'll give it a shot over the whole thing right but what I want to do is I want to focus on this edge I want to soften that edge and I want to bring that in and I'm gonna go around and soften all the edges right and you can two hand this too is like as your arms and shoulders get tired so I put it on a slight angle I kind of get the edges once the edges are soft then I just sand the whole thing and you can sand up and down back and forth side to side and then in circles it doesn't really matter and then feel it after it's got to feel smooth right so you get it kind of the way you want it it all feels smooth it doesn't look rough anywhere and then you come in with your sanding sponge again you can go over the edges if you need to 
And this is super smooth, like a baby's bottom. All right, so that's awesome. So that's why I have these sponges and they work really, really well, especially like your walls, say has a contour or you're up in the corner like this and it's perfect. It gets right into the corners. So anyway, that's basically the tools that I use, a couple of little drywall sanding tips. Um, I would show you mudding, but I'm really not good at it, so it's <laughs> it'd be a little embarrassing. Okay, I appear good, but it, I'm not, right? I use way too much mud, and you know, I'm not super smooth at it. You know, you can tell I've done it a lot, but I'm not good at it, so. <laughs> All right, so if you've never drywalled before, don't be afraid of it. It's not that difficult. And uh, Home Depot and some of the other DIY stores, they have like uh, little workshops that you can sign up for and they'll actually teach you how to do it and they'll show you the tools that you need and the techniques and it, they're super awesome and uh, I highly recommend them. That's actually where I went and learned how to drywall because I had no idea, no idea. And uh, yeah five minutes later boom off you go right so your first time it's going to be messy and ugly but you get better at it and at least you know what you're supposed to do right anyway thanks for watching cheers